Hi guys, uh, just a quick video today to show how I have changed the fuel injectors. That's them there. On an E92 320i BMW, that's the ship there. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because it's having the cold start misfires in the mornings. And I've already changed one once before and uh, it's coming up saying misfire in cylinder 2. Although the last time it said that I had to change the injector in cylinder 3 to solve the misfire. So I don't know what that was about. So anyway, apologies, I've already dismantled some of this. So I'm just going to show you sort of quickly how I did it. Um, so the injectors are deep in here. So in order to get them out... Uh, First thing I did is just dig them away down to them and then I'll disconnect the battery and stuff. But uh, so for now, uh, you have one, two, three, four hex heads, and a couple of just sort of bolts there. Take them out, and this pollen filter cover moves away. And then a couple of little tabs. Here, you just pull them out of these little slits. And a couple of clips here and on the back. This lifts off. Exactly the same on the other side. The little rubber grommet things here and here. A couple of clips there on the other side, and that lifts off. And then once you have those off, that gives you access to these little uh, electronic clips we just pull back. I just pull them with a wee pair of pliers off the little uh, bits of plastic that we're on and you just hang that down like so. Exactly the same on the other side. Hang this one down like so, it goes in here into the little clips again so that's quite easy down to this bit you just basically pull all of this stuff here forward and it unclips from underneath here in three places and that allows you to lift away this cover here so once you have all that lifted away uh, you're going to be able to take this engine cover off you have to remove that cap to slide it out and put the cap back on and then you'll be able to get at wiring harnesses and fuel injectors so i'll start uh, so basically to get that off there's a few allen one two there's probably more back there three there at least three anyway maybe more uh on the engine rocker cover thing you just basically take that off so i need to take this oil cap off i just lift it up a bit put the oil cap back on and then slide the whole thing out so nothing falls down in there so i'll do that now and come back to it so i basically just uh did what i said there one two and there's one back there let me wait think at the top three uh allen heads that held in that uh, basically I loosened them, took the cap off, lifted the front up, reached in, put the cap back on, then dragged it out. So that has exposed uh, the injectors. <clears throat> so there's a fuel line run to the first one, second one, and sort of in underneath all this, we've got the... <clears throat> Third one on the fourth one, third one on the fourth one. So, I have to go and check, but I think I'm going to be replacing two and three because I think that's where the fault lies, and I have two, so, and they're both index 11, so I'll put them on two and three, hoping that's the same bank. Uh, this four cylinder, so <clears throat> basically, what I need to do now is if you look down in there. You'll see that screw there, that little nut top thing just where my finger is. That's a little bracket which holds in the first two injectors. So I need to take that one off, 
and then need to go to that one straight down the middle there just above the wiring and take that one off and bring out those two brackets but before I do that I will just loosen off uh, the fuel lines there and lift them away it's just connected in two places fairly easy and then the wee electrical connectors on the injectors themselves just there it just you just push in and pull that it just pops off so we'll start taking all that stuff off and then i'll come back to you sorry just before i do that um i forgot to mention i'm going to un uh, detach the battery and so it's just a a socket a 10 mil socket just loosen up that terminal there And once it's loose enough, it's not yet. Ladies, both hands load. I'm just going to lift this up and then wrap it up on a towel and set it there so there's no chance of it reconnecting. Uh, I'm not going to take that side off because it's a lot more complicated. That side is more work. So I'll just uh, basically slide that up and off. Wrap it up with a towel and set it back there so there's no chance of it disconnecting or reconnecting while I'm working on the uh, fuel injectors. So that's it now. Disconnect. Just lifted it up, wrapped it up in that towel and set it back down there. There's no chance that can reconnect now. So then I'll go back up to the front where I'll get to work on. Disconnecting the fuel lines there on number two and three, uh, so that I can uh, then take off the wheel electric, uh, wheel electric uh, plugs and the clamps and pull those two injectors out and replace them. But I'm going to be replacing them with these two that I picked up on eBay, They're used but in good condition. They're very reasonably priced. Both index eleven injectors. Uh, and I know that you should be replacing these little seals and also this one, which is on another, that's a done, that injector there is done, I've replaced that before. Should be replacing new, you should be using new seals there and there and there, but I'm not going to because I've done it before and it's worked okay. Uh, but I'm not saying at all that that's the right procedure because it's not the right procedure. It's just the way I'm doing it on this car because uh, I'm not going to get into the other stuff. So uh, I'll start doing that now and then give you an update. Okay. So still in the same spot except I have let the engine sit for quite a long time to ensure that it's cold. And I have cracked just with a spanner. This nut here and this nut here on the injector 2 and the same on injector 3 here and here. So they're loose and then I'm going for the bracket down here that holds the, two, the wee clamp, the wee bracket that holds the injectors down. So it's an 11 mil. 11 mil nut on that. I think that's it. Hang on. So, yep, thought that was going to happen mucking about. But not to worry because I have a magnet here. First of all, to take this clamp out. So basically, I usually just turn that a little bit, like so, and you can get it up and wiggle it out, hopefully. It's very difficult to do this with one hand, but I'll, I'll keep trying. So basically, I've managed to get it caught now.
there's a little screw that I, that I dropped. So I need to reach down here. I'm gonna need both hands to reach down here and get that uh, little clamp out. I think I'll try it again here. I have a bit better luck this time. I want to get it out to show you that it's a wee bit con concaved. And that's precisely why I'm struggling to get it out. I need to turn it around the other way. I'll, I'll use both hands to get that out and I'll show you it. So there's a little clamp out. As you can see, it's a wee bit concaved. So that whenever you tighten it down, the cross injector one and two, it pushes them down. As the bow straightens out, it pushes those injectors down into the engine. So, I need to do the same now with that clamp you can see down in there. In between three and four. So, I'll do that now and get that out as well. Okay, folks. So, the fuel lines are off, as you saw, and so those weak clamps. The electric connections were quite easy. You just basically pull them out. And that left the injector just sitting there looking up from that hole. Uh, not attached to anything. So what I did was I used this bush press tool. I found a nut that fitted on the end of it. That also fitted the top of uh, the old injector. They weren't stuck in that hard. I basically just got on a couple of threads and just slid this up and down. You know. And just tapped upwards a couple of times and it came out. I probably didn't need the tool, I could have just probably pulled that out with my hands. So I'm looking at this one here. That's an index eight. Seven five eight nine oh four eight. Seven five eight nine oh four eight. So now I'm gonna be replacing it with the same part number. It's just a different index. Yeah. What I am going to do is what you shouldn't do. Let's reuse that little seal there. So I'll fit that little seal onto the new injector. And take a note of these numbers here because that's going to be cylinder two. So they're going to be coded in later. And I'm also going to reuse that seal there. Again, you're not supposed to do that. It's not part of the process, but it's the way I'm going to do it because it suits me to do it that way. So. Um, <clears throat> I'll fit the ejector it's pretty simple you know the ejector just goes in the same way it basically came out I'll slide this up on over till it's up all the way like it was in that one I'll bring it over here I'll slide it down into that hole down there where it goes put the clamp back on there Reconnect the electrical connector, reconnect the silver fuel line, I'll do that for both two and three, and that, that's it, I'm just going to put it back together again. So I'll keep going here and I'll keep it posted. So that's both injectors back in, I literally just gently push them in and press them down into the hole with the seals on them and they went down in nice and snug so you know, they start putting the clamps back on just loosely and the fuel lines will sort of tighten everything up once it's all aligned and uh, plug back in again with the wee, uh, the wee electrical connections and then I'll put it back together so that's pretty much that um, changed out for now okay folks well that's the two new injectors in I've just started it up and it started pretty quickly actually without any issues. I'm just checking now for fuel leaks. Where well, I was working. There's no fuel leaks, so it seems to have worked. Um, I'd say you should replace the collar seal 
on the main seal on those uh, injectors before fitting them and you also need to code them to the car which I'm going to try and do uh, with that wee laptop and INPA if I can't do it I'll get somebody else to do it over the next few days so so far so good it's all running and there's no warning lights so no warning lights, no smell of petrol everything appears to be working, no visible leaks so what I'll do is turn it off and put everything back together and then I'll just get it coated and hopefully that'll fix my cold start misfire uh, I hope this video helps somebody who's thinking about doing the job I, it's not that hard a job, I'm not a mechanic and it's not that hard to do um, and yes I've cut a few corners there but it only took me about an hour or maybe an hour and a half and it was quite cheap to do it myself so thanks for watching